Hi, welcome back to the Restoration Couple and the Loft Project. I thought it was about time to give you a bit of an update. So if you've been following this project from the start, you'll, be, you'll know that we're kind of doing things a little bit more alternative and DIY up here. We haven't just gone ahead and plasterboarded and skimmed. We've kind of started introducing a few different um, kind of methods, I guess, for finishing the walls. So we managed to get this um, wall of panelling done, which is going to be behind where the desk is. Uh, that is 18mm ply, and I've cut the grooves in that to give the idea that it's kind of made up of planks. Um, I've taken loads of footage over the past few weeks, and I'm just kind of weeding through it really because it's all a bit uh, here and there. So I'll do one kind of update video now, and then we'll pick out little individual projects from what we've done. Um, so the stone wall is all painted now, and I think you've seen that. That's with the clay paint. And what we've been basically doing in the last uh, week or two is getting this wall paneling done, getting the sort of uh, had to get the wiring put in and then we cladded that ridge of the ceiling uh, so I'll show you a few of those bits and then show you what the plan is for today. So you see here we've got the lighting put in we still got to have these beams put back in which will be on the reverse side of these rafters um, and they'll be the same as the other end of sort of reclaimed wood that we've got and that ridge is going to be sanded and painted white today so it'll be all very neutral very white bright uh, with the kind of the beams exposed there. So this room really is coming along now and really after we finish this panelling and bits of snagging we're going to be almost there as far as getting the floor paint done and that will be a separate project we haven't got the paint yet and we've only just started, Joe started prepping the floor uh, sanding it um, but obviously it needs a really good clean down before we get anywhere near it with the uh, with the paint so these need dusting off but I've also started um, wire brushing back the purlins and the truss which we've exposed uh, it's only a small section but I wanted to kind of clean it up and once once I went over it with a wire brush that took all the kind of soot and cobwebs and all sorts that have built up on it over the decades um, but I think once this is doesn't really need a sand as such because I want to leave all the saw marks in it but it just needs to be smooth, splinter free, and I just kind of ease the corner so no one bangs their head getting under here. And then looking down even further into the, this is our little snug area. We've got the plywood flooring, and I've done that in, a, in its own video already. That will basically replicate our pine floor, and when it's all prepped and painted throughout, I'm hoping that it'll be identical to the pine floor. Right, so this is where it got a little bit more experimental. Um, ignore what you see here. I was just having a mess around last night. This is the original lime plastered stud wall. The plaster was shot to bits and it was either a case of board over it and skim it or panel it like we've done here. So what I've used is 12mm uh, ply, just structural, cheap structural ply. And in the same way as I cut the grooves in the floorboards and the office panelling, I've cut these grooves in here. Now, rather than just do plank, 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 the same as the others, I've, we wanted a little bit more rustic in here, so I've changed the, the widths of the planks. And then we primed, or filled, sanded, primed the surface, and then uh, I've gone over just with three different color grays that we had, and painted, well, the idea was I paint all them separately, different colors, we're gonna paint a whole lot white, and then if we want to, we can sand through in different areas, and it'll give the effect that it's made up of different boards of different age, different, you know, um, colors. But after I put the paint on, I just started rubbing through, just to have a play around, really. And some of the effects I got were quite cool. So I'll show you a few close-ups, because um, it's quite interesting, and for a bit of furniture or something in the future, it might be worth playing around with. So this is the sort of area that I was working on, so it's just plywood, painted white, and then gone over with these greys afterwards. And then I basically just took a, a blade or a, a palette knife and just scraped, as the, the paint was still wet, scraped some of it back through to wood, some of it back through to the white, 
and it's kind of given almost when you get burnt wood, like burnt larch or something, that sort of that sort of effect. Um, I kind of like it, but I think it's just a bit too much for up here. So what I was doing last night is this um, structure, which is an old cupboard, original, original tunnel groove cladding on the side here, but it was just covered in wallpaper, uh, polystyrene panelling for insulation and all sorts. So I've just been scraping everything off here to get it back to the, the timber, the painted timber. This door, again, that was uh, covered like all the other doors in the house, covered in a sheet of hardboard back in the 70s when the, it was like the in thing to do, covered in uh, hardboard and gloss white, the whole lot. So we've pulled off that hardboard and you know, uh, that's uncovered basically a nice four panel door which we've got dozens of these nails in there now to pull out, fill, sand and paint. And I'm probably going to take the doors off and possibly even do them out in the garage, which means we don't, it doesn't stall what we're doing up here, we can just get on and carry on with other jobs. You see here the old architrave, if I find something white, just to give you an idea of what happens to these oil based white paints, even modern paints go like this. Um, you can see this is just some white paint, but occasionally you know you come across this. When you've got wallpaper next to it or a dark wall, you, it looks white, and then as soon as you start painting or you hold something up, I mean, look at that, that uh, really has yellowed. And that's probably 30, 40 years old, so it's expected, but even some of the new paints we used in the first year of moving here, which were solvent based, have already started yellowing which um, is one of the reasons why this water-based, uh, the kind of acrylic eggshell that I use now, um, just seems to hold that bright white much better. So that's another job, sand that, and obviously that's a dust mask job because this old paint is, um, we don't know what's in it. And then lastly, so I can get back on with some work, um, this room, the studio bedroom area, uh, I don't know how much has changed to be honest, we've got the, the again we've got the lighting in, haven't done the panelling in this uh, ridge yet. Well, one thing I have done is in the eaves, on one of the three eaves which we've left for storage, um, we boarded out and carpeted with some old carpet tiles and that's really nice now so we've kind of, we emptied it, hoovered everything, all the cobwebs, cleared it all out and now that's all tidy in there storage has gone back in, it's full again, um, but it meant things are, are tucked away, sealed out the room now, we can start sanding the floors and getting on with the decorating. So one of the things I do have to do still is build these hatches, I haven't quite decided how I'm going to do it yet, whether I'm going to have an architrave and a door or just like a panel which sits in, but we need to build some insulated door hatches to, um, to kind of cover these. I might use some of the reclaimed pine or I could just keep it simple and just do it with um, kind of MDF painted the same colour as the walls. And then lastly, I guess, <laughs> well, it's something we've put on hold, uh, but the two Valux or two skylight windows um, and the associated sort of trim around those, we've put that on hold just because of budget really at the moment, but um, everything is left ready for that to happen. The openings are there, so there's no structural work, it's just a case of getting around to buying them and fitting them. One thing I haven't touched on, which someone did bring up in one of the videos, was where's our first fix electrics? We were quite fortunate in that because of the way the loft is laid out, we've got the counter battens which we left exposed on the ridge so we could just feed our, get our cabling put, well it's actually all left in here from the electricians when we did the rewire. So it was in this stud wall anyway, it could then be taken to the lights. Uh, remember these rooms, these were rooms already, so there was old wiring up here, so it's just a case of kind of taking that out and, uh, and feeding the new stuff in. Um, but as far as the, the actual ring main, the sockets up here, that we haven't touched yet. Um, we just decided that, that there's only two internal stud walls, the ends of each room which we didn't need any sockets there, there was no need for that. So what we're doing is just seeing literally one loop of the whole of the loft area uh, within the eaves, 
so that we can run the cables on the uh, the purlins uh, around and then they can come underneath the floorboards at the end. So we've basically got that ring and then if we, where, where we want sockets we can bring them through. Now I did want to run everything on the inside of the insulation but just because of kind of the, the ease of doing it and also not having kind of work mapped out exactly what the use of these rooms was yet, um, I think we will just bring them through and what we'll do is just use a, a conduit through the insulation and just make sure it's nice and airtight from the outside um, from that eave space. In the office here I need lots of sockets which I'm just going to go surface mounted under the desk uh, and they'll be fixed to the panelling. We won't see them um, but if I started kind of chasing into the wall or kind of fitting in socket boxes there when this becomes a bedroom or something in the future we're going to end up with you know uh, six double sockets in a row so I, I wanted to use just simple surface mounted while they might not look great they are much easier to take off and fill holes um, I just wanted to keep, keep it future proof really but that, so that's why we haven't done any of, of that cabling it's just literally one ring to go through and bring the sockets through and of course as and when we want to we could just bring more through from the outside um, but I think we'll, we'll just put a sensible amount in to start with so I think that's it, I think that's the, the update, the tour I'm going to get on with these individual projects and I'll start compiling more videos when I get a chance right you're up to date now, thanks for watching stay tuned for more videos and remember if you can do it yourself and we'll see you next time